going to read. I'm going to read one verse for you. One verse for you. Psalms 119, 130. King James Version. And the Bible says this. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. And I want to use a simple subject this morning, piercing the darkness. Yeah, that's what God said to say to you. I'm going to be piercing the darkness. Bless your word today, God. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to do my best to just run through the, the, the woods and through the creek so I can get you out in a timely manner. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato once said this. He said, ignorance is the root of all evil. Ignorance. When I say ignorance, I'm not talking about stupidity. Because you can be an educated person and still not have common sense. How many people know people like that? So I'm not against degrees. I'm a degree person myself. But, but, but just because you have a degree doesn't mean you have common sense. You can have a PhD and not have common sense. I found out that uh, common sense ain't that common. <laughs> Let me leave it alone. Ignorance is simply lack of understanding, lack of awareness, or get this, a lack of a perception of the world that you live in. That ignorant people are people whose worldview is limited to a block, to a corner, to a country, to a class. That's why prejudiced people, racist people, have an issue because the only thing they can see is the people in their class, in their corner, on their block, or their group of people, and anything that exists outside of that, they're oblivious to. There's a whole world out there, but racist people tend to stay in a narrow, confined group of people. I only hang with black people. I only hang with white people. I only hang with people of a certain educational class. And so these people tend to be racist and narrow. And whenever there is ignorance like that, it opens the door and becomes the seedbed to all kinds of evil work. See, they view the world through an extremely limited, myopic, short-sighted, narrow perspective. Hence, we get the term narrow-mindedness. Last week, we were talking about the importance of exposure. Now, I'm not going to belabor that point. Just go back and listen to that message last week and go into it and just study that some more. We talked about exposure because narrow-mindedness occurs in people when their understanding and their exposure is limited. When I was a little boy, my mom had a rule that if we went outside, we couldn't go off this block. From 24th Street to 23rd Street, you could not go off this block. And to a little boy, eight, nine years old, that was my whole world. It shocked me to realize that the world was bigger than the block I played on. Then I got a little older and started walking to school. But then I figured out that the world was bigger than the distance between my house and my school. Then I started moving around and went to college and realized that the whole world was bigger than Wilmington, Delaware. Then I started traveling the world and realized that the whole world is bigger than the United States. What am I saying? I'm saying that whenever people are narrow, narrow-minded, they think that the whole world is the few folks you hang with, roll with, talk to, and, per and, and, and perhaps have fellowship with. So if you hang out with the same people, the same mindset, you think the whole world is the world you're in. But there is a world outside of what you're exposed to. And when you're not aware of that, you're ignorant. Ooh. Think, think, of, think, think of knowledge like this. Think of knowledge like a highway, right? If you have a broad highway, you can get more cars moving. You can get more traffic moving. If you have a narrow highway, you don't have as much traffic moving. You can't get but so many people through. If you have a six lane, you can move many cars. If you have a two lane, you can get fewer cars. The wider the road, the more cars can pass through. The narrower the road, the less cars can go through. That's the way it is with narrow-minded people. If your mind is narrow, if your mind is very small and short-sighted, only a certain amount of information can get through. And if it does get through, it gets to you late. You follow what I'm saying? 
And it's not that you're a bad person. It's just that you don't step outside of the things that you're used to being around or the people that you used to be around. There's a whole eight-lane highway out there that you could be traveling on, but you can't do it because you only hang around with one-lane people. Some of you right now are dealing with people who are one-lane people. You've got big vision, but you hang around with people who have narrow vision. And it's hard to get a narrow vision person to be in good company with a big picture person. Sometimes you're around people and you're trying to talk about the big picture and what's going, and what's going to like on this level, on this scale, but they're insisting on being the small scale and it frustrates you. How many people are frustrated with people who are too narrow? I don't have good conversations with narrow-minded people because I want to talk about other subjects and topics and big things. You can't go see the world and then come back to my neighborhood between 23rd and 24th Street and think I'm going to fit. I'm not going to fit. You can't get me back on the farm once I've seen the city. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Uh, 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 think about your internet service. Your internet service has something they call bandwidth. And bandwidth is the capacity at which a network can transmit and receive information. The more bandwidth you have, the more information you can receive and transfer. It's not just transferring. It's not just what you can send out. It's what you can receive. The larger the bandwidth, the more you can transmit and receive. The narrower the bandwidth, some of you understand what that's like. You can't get things to move as quickly as you like. You can't get things to buffer. There's things are buffering. Things are not coming in the way you like to. The slower information, the fewer information, because your bandwidth is too small. God, help me to preach this word. It's the narrow-mindedness of people that creates the greatest problems that exist. That's why you see racist people, because they can't see things, get this, from a 30,000-foot perspective. Narrow-minded people can't see the big picture. They can't see how all the pieces work together. We have a leadership meeting every month with all of our leaders because one of the, reasons, one of the things that I realize is that when people are over particular departments or ministries, they tend to start operating in silos. And so you think the whole world is the usher board or the whole world is the choir or the whole world is the media. So I bring all the leaders together so we can all cooperate and talk and conversate because you are just a piece of the big picture. And so I know this, that if you're not going to be narrow-minded, you have to be purposeful about it. We could let you operate in different silos, and what happens when you don't bring everybody together to collaborate and, and process information, you could be doing something that is totally out of sync with the big picture. It's not that what you're doing is not good or it's not right. It just doesn't fit the big picture. Some of you who have more than one person live in a house, you have to have rules or structure for your house. Everybody in this house has to follow this rule. But when everybody in the house starts doing their own thing, the saddest scripture I read in the Bible is where the Bible said that when there was no king in Israel, that everybody did that which was right in their own eyes. And when you have everybody doing what they want to do, you have chaos because you don't see the big picture. You only focus on your small part in the big picture. Y'all with me so far? And, and listen, listen, and so they can't see the big picture. They can't see how it all works together. And the absence of the ability to see the big picture becomes the seedbed for every, every evil work and increases the likelihood of people walking in error because, get this, brother, they don't have enlightenment. They're not bad people. They're just unenlightened people. They're not necessarily wicked people, Charlene. They're just people who don't know the big picture. They don't see everything. Their world is just where they are, and they don't realize there's something way outside of where you are that exists. So in our text, David contends that the entrance of God's word, get this, gives us light. Whew. The implication is that it is possible to be walking in darkness, in ignorance, and not have light. Light is always synonymous with knowledge with awareness, and darkness is always synonymous with ignorance. Where there is no light, there is limited mobility. Where there is no light, where there is no knowledge, where there is no exposure, no awareness, there is limited mobility. 
Let me tell you something I did. Friday, we were getting ready for the uh, active shooter event, and I came in the building early, and, and I, I, as I sometimes do, I just come in the building to worship. Uh, I came in the building, I came to the sanctuary, and all the lights were off in the sanctuary. So even though I've been in this building a thousand times, the moment I walked in, I started turning on the lights. Here's what happened. The light didn't create the chairs in the room. The light didn't create the podium. The light didn't create the instruments. All the light did was reveal what was already there. Somebody's hearing me already. That you could be in something, around something, near something, and lack awareness. That you can be near something and not even know it's there. So because I didn't want to stumble over something, I turned on the lights. And the lights revealed what was in the room. Can I go deeper? What I also realized is that when I turned off the lights, it didn't take away what was in the room. It didn't make the chairs disappear. It just concealed what was in the room. When I turned the lights off, the podium didn't disappear, the band instrument didn't disappear, the chairs didn't disappear. Everything that was already here was still here. I just couldn't see it. In fact, what I did was, because this switch is on a different switch than the back switch, I went to the front of the building, turned out the lights, the whole place was dark, and I couldn't move around very quickly, Connie, because I couldn't see. It, it, it was here, it was in the room, but, but there are some people who, who are like Jacob, who had an encounter with God, that I, I could be in the place and just not be aware. I noticed that when the lights was on, Adrian, I could move very quickly and maneuver and move things around. But when the lights was off, I couldn't move as quickly. I was stumbling around, and I had to move very slow because I couldn't see. It's not that I'm stupid. I just couldn't see. It's not that I'm ignorant. I just couldn't see. So the light comes on to make me aware, and the more light I have, it increases my mobility. Can I go deeper? I also noticed this, Connie, that even though I had the lights on in here, when I went to the youth sanctuary, because it was dark, because the youth sanctuary is on a whole different circuit, the lights were on in here, but it was still dark in there. So I had to turn those lights on to operate in that space. Then I went over to the children's area, and it was dark in there because it's on a different circuit. I had to turn the lights in there so I could operate in that space. What am I saying? I'm saying that all of us have areas in our lives that you are not as enlightened as other areas. That just because you may be enlightened in this area doesn't mean that you're enlightened in every area. That it is possible for you to be smart enough to manage your, your wife or your marriage, but not be a good parent. We got to get away from assuming that people are good at one thing, that they're good at everything. No more than you would trust your car mechanic to work on your teeth. Just because I'm good at this doesn't mean I'm good at that. You could be a great speaker, but not be a good business person. You could be wonderful with personal relationships, but you can't get along with people in your, in your job or in your business. Just because you're good at one thing does not mean you're good at everything. And all of us have some area in my life that is dark, that is unenlightened, that I don't have as much information as I need. That's why you can be a good preacher and not be able to balance a checkbook. Because just because you're good at one thing doesn't mean you're good at everything. Are y'all with me this morning? So you have to, at first of all, acknowledge the fact that there is some areas of my life that I need enlightenment. That's why we preach the gospel every week. The people who are narrow and myopic and assume that they know everything is because you don't know how dark your world is. And so God's word doesn't come to just enlighten some areas. It comes to enlighten every area. 
that even while I'm speaking today, that the word that you're listening to, you should be finding some place to apply this word. Oh, my God. I got to run on. I'm trying to run on. Oh, the, 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 what was I at? Listen, listen, listen. We all have blind spots. Can, can you acknowledge that? That as smart as you are, as educated as you are, as exposed as you are, as connected as you are, there are some things that you just can't see. I love these new cars today because they make all these cameras everywhere, right? We used back in the day just had a mirror. You had the, the rear view mirror and the two side mirrors. Now you got the rear view mirror, the backup mirror, the side mirrors, and you got a camera on this side. Because you know what it is? Manufacturers understood that we all have blind spots. That you can be driving along in your car and there is always something that's outside of your purview. Here's the problem. It's not the things that I know that get me in trouble, Don. It's the things I don't know. It's the things I don't know. That there's always something outside my purview that's in my blind spot. And the enemy loves to hang out in your blind spot. If I saw you in my mirror, I could avoid you. If I saw you in the side mirror, I know what it's doing. The problem is I can't see in all directions at the same time. And the enemy loves to hang out in the areas that you're ignorant in. That's why he'll let you dance and you still be broke. I love people who work, who operate in the word of knowledge because I, I happen to work with somebody who operates in the word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is different from prophecy. Prophecy is foretelling. Prophecy is talking about something that has not occurred yet. It's something that is futuristic. But a word of knowledge reveals something that's already here. You just don't see it. And sometimes when I talk to people, I know things that I shouldn't know. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Leah. I don't know why I know it. I just know it. I, I, I haven't got on the phone and gossiped about you. I haven't followed you around. I haven't followed you into your life and called nobody and checked your Facebook. You just know things that you shouldn't know. That's what a word of knowledge is. And some of you, God is trying to increase your word of knowledge because the Holy Spirit reveals things to you that you shouldn't know. That sometimes people are concealing things and they think they're getting over on you. But what they don't realize is that God has already peeped your card. Oh, I love it. I love it when they try to lie and God said he lying. Anybody ever had that happen to you? That while they talking, God said they lying. They lie. And I don't know why I know it. I just know it, Mark Brown. And then I have to pray, okay, God, what am I supposed to do with this information? See, when you're immature, everything come to your mind, come out your mouth. And sometimes you say things that you shouldn't say because it wasn't for you to say something. It was for you to pray about it. That's why people who feel like you got a prophetic word, I just got to say it. No, you need wisdom. Just because you have knowledge doesn't mean you have wisdom. wisdom knowledge is knowing the information. Wisdom is knowing what to do with the information that you have. And because I'm somebody who operates in a word of knowledge, I'm always praying, God, give me wisdom. Should I say something? Should I not say something? Should I let it slide? Should I speak to it? And should I not speak to it? Because I always want to be aware. I don't want to be stupid. My prayer is, God, just don't let me be ignorant. I ain't got to be rich. I ain't got to be good looking. I ain't got to be powerful. I ain't got to be influential. I just don't want to be ignorant. Don't let me walk into situations that trap me and get me and trip me because I couldn't see. Look at somebody say, don't be ignorant. What they say back in the country, ignorant. Yeah, not ignorant, ignorant. So write this down. I want to talk to you about the purpose of the light. I got to rush. God, the purpose of the light. We need God to enlighten us because it is possible to be like Jacob and be in the house of God and knew it not. That's why I need enlightenment. Jacob was out there and saw a ladder going up to heaven and woke up from a dream and said, oh, my God, this is the house of God. And I knew it not. That sometimes you can be in the presence of greatness and not know it. You could be in the, great, in the presence of a great person. You could be even in this church. You walk into this place. Some people say, well, I just got to go to that church over there. And some people see this as a gateway to glory. 
That's why they can just come in and go out when they want to because you don't understand that you're in the presence of a great God. Oh, my God, for the revelation that I'm in the house of God and I didn't know it. It is possible to be in a great place and not be aware. It's possible to be in a great place. And so what I need God to do is enlighten me. Somebody lay your hands on your old head, your own head, and say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. There, there may be something that I need to see that I don't see. I, I, I realize I don't know everything. Just open my eyes. Don't Show me what to do with these kids. Show me what to do with this marriage. Show me what to do with this ministry. Show me how to approach certain people. Show me what to say. Show me how to say it. Show me how to approach it. Open my eyes. I don't want to be ignorant. I don't want to be walking around stumbling and falling over stuff that I could have walked around because of my own ignorance. Open my eyes. God's word comes to pierce the darkness that exists in our lives, to pull back the veil. And look at this, Connie, to challenge our belief systems. That's what God's word comes to do. It comes to challenge your belief systems. Whenever God wants to radically change something or change somebody, he sends light. Whenever God wants to change the direction or, or the trajectory of, trajectory of something, God sends light. Because listen, beloved, people only are able to walk in the light of the knowledge that they have. You can only walk in the light of the knowledge that you have. Where there's limited light, there's limited vision. And where there's limited vision, there's limited mobility. The problem is we don't know what we don't know. Selah. The problem is you don't know what you don't know. What I know, I know. My problem is I don't know what I don't know. And it's what I don't know that's causing me great problems. Some people believe that ignorance is bliss. As long as I don't know, I'm good. As long as I don't know, I don't know that the robbers behind the door get ready to hit me in the back of the head. As long as I don't know, it's not going to happen to me. It's going to happen to you anyway. I'm not going to open up my mail and let me know that I got a past due bill on my light bill. I just took on the lights and the lights is off. I don't know this man is crazy. He's an axe murderer and killed three wives. I'm just going on a date. Ignorance is bliss. Just don't tell me. That's why people don't like correction. And people who can't take correction will never grow because there's always something that you don't know. And the devil hides in the things that you don't know. <laughs> who in here can admit that there are some things that I truly did, I did out of ignorance? Yeah, that, that hindsight being 2020, that if I knew better, I would have did better. Right. That the things that I did was because I was a bad person, a wicked person. I just didn't know how many people can look back at some things you said or some things you did or some people that you dated or maybe even married and thought, Lord, if I had known. Hindsight being 2020, I would have cut that phone off. I would have went the other direction. I would have never joined that church. I would have never went to that. Um, Lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, give me some light. Give me some light. Before you sign a contract, give me some light. Before you get into a commitment, God, give me some light. Put the light on the subject. Let me see what I'm dealing with. Before I jump in the car with this fool, let me see what in the world is going. Now, I know, I know that some of you want light for yourselves, but you work in places where God has sent you to be light in dark places. God has sent you into jobs, into communities, into churches, into ministries, into departments that were already dark. You're always complaining about it being dark. Shut up. Maybe God put you there to be the light. Instead of you talking about these folks over here is ignorant, I'm going to another church. Maybe God put you in this church to bring your so-called expertise to what we're trying to do. Maybe God put you over the department so he could use you to bring information, to bring knowledge, to bring perspective to it. We 
were dying from darkness until you came. But when you come and you bring perspective, it helps us walk in the light of your knowledge. Stop being so full of yourself. You got 59 degrees, but you ain't doing nothing with it. Maybe God gave you the degree so that you can have an impact on this church. Somebody say, God, use me to pierce the darkness. So what am I saying? I'm saying for some of you, you're on an assignment. Truth be told, for some of you, you are on assignment. God doesn't open your eyes, give you insight, give you information, so you can brag about how smart you are. He opens your eyes so that you can then walk into a situation and enlighten somebody else. Y'all didn't know that y'all needed this until I told you. You didn't know there was a problem here until I fixed it. You was content walking around in your ignorance, in your darkness, and running into stuff and wonder why your, why your life's not working out. But God brings people along who give you information in areas that you don't have it. Who comes along and be strength because all of us have strengths and weaker strengths. So what I need around me are people who are smart in areas that I'm not. I don't need somebody to do what I do, Mark Brown. I need somebody who's gifted, who's wired, who's trained, who's educated to do what I don't do. Who can bring light and perspective to what we're going to do. Somebody said there's a purpose for your information. Number two. No matter how, I'm going to talk to you about the, the power. That was the purpose of light. I'm talking about the power of light. No matter how dark your situation may be, darkness cannot stop light. Ha, ha, ha. No matter how bad your situation is, no matter how broke you may be, no matter how depressed or tired or weak you may be, the entrance of God's word pierces the darkness, comes into the room to let you understand that you cannot stop Knowledge. Look at this. John chapter one, verse one through five. In the beginning was the word. Yeah. And the word was with God. See, that's why I emphasize the word over here. I emphasize the word. We have singing. We have dancing. We have music. We have all that. But the emphasis is the word. Because in the beginning was the word. Before there was an angelic choir. Before there was a Satan, before there was anybody to clap for God, in the beginning, at the very first, was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word, look here, was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Get this, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And get this fifth verse, and the light shines in darkness. That's what the light does. Every time the light comes up on a dark situation, it shines. That light cannot stand to have dark places. Every time it comes in the room, it's got to shine. That's why the word of God is being preached to you. Because somewhere in your life is an area that you're being defeated, that you're being frustrated, that you're stumbling. And God said, wherever I see darkness, I'm going to shine. I'm going to shine on your job. I'm going to shine in your marriage. I'm going to shine in your money. Your money could be better if you let me shine on it. I'm going to shine. Some of you right now are wringing your hands trying to figure out what you're going to do. And God said, let me give you some light, some insight. I got ready to sign a contract this week, Mark Brown. And when I looked at it, I realized that there was a clause in there that they didn't tell me. But I saw it. God put my eyes on it. He opened my eyes to what happened. And it saved our church $40,000. The man was going to let me be ignorant. But I said, wait, 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 right here. That's what knowledge does. When knowledge comes in, it helps you to be a defense against ignorance. The Bible said this in one place. It said money is a defense and wisdom is a defense. Just like money saves you from the consequences of poverty, wisdom saves you from the consequences of ignorance. It's a defense. It keeps you from getting God, y'all. 
The devil right now is walking around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's hoping to catch you slipping and hope you get got. But look at somebody say, that devil's a lie. You ain't going to get me, devil. I'm a praying man. I'm a praying woman. You ain't going to slip up on me. You trying to get me. God already told me what you up to. And I stopped you at the door. How many people are glad that God will stop some stuff at the door? No, 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 devil. Not up in here. Not in this church. Not in this camp. Not in this house. I'm rebuking every devil and every demon and every demonic force. And the light of God's presence is shining on you right now. You think I don't see you, devil? I see you. I'm just not worried about you. The light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended not. The word comprehend means it couldn't resist it, couldn't overcome it, that the, light, that the darkness could never extinguish light. That's why your critics can't stop your calling on your life, because their ignorance cannot stop your calling. Their ignorance cannot stop you from the greatness that God has ordained for you. Oh, I got one clap. That just because they don't like you and they don't agree with you, and they don't even they don't even want you in a, in their presence can't stand you just because you got a bad attitude about me don't mean you can stop me i can go home on that right there just because you don't agree, just because you don't going to support, you think your lack of support is going to stop god from doing what he's going to do look at somebody say he's still going to do it my ex-husband walked out on me, but he's still going to do it. My wife walked out on me, but he's still going to do it. They refused to support me at my job, but God's still going to do it. They tried to get me fired, and they ran rumors about me, but God's still going to do it. Is there anybody in here that knows you've been called by God, and you're so called that the devil can't stop you? Give God a praise if you know that's right. Last thing, and I'm done. I want to talk about the promise of light. Light comes with a promise. It promises to change everything it touches. There's no way you can turn on light in this room and it not touch everything in its wake. And everything is going to be affected by it. Light changes the whole outlook on things. When light comes in, you see your spouse differently. Some of you, you don't need another spouse you need another look. Some of you, you don't need another church. You need another look. Some of you, you may not need to leave your location or your job. You just need to see your job differently. If you see it differently, you'll get different results. If you see the person differently, you'll get different results. Some of you are in conflict with people. Because the enemy is in your mind with negativity about the person. You don't understand what they've been through. You don't understand what they've come through. You don't understand the things they've had to deal with. There's a reason why they act the way they do. There's a reason why they react or respond the way they do. Sometimes you just got to take time to get to know people because sometimes you'll say something and trigger them and you don't know why. You just don't like them. But as you begin to pray and interact and have conversation, now I understand why you, oh my God. When I understand what I'm dealing with, it helps me to better get along with you. But the reason why I can't get along with you is because I don't understand you. I don't even know what's going on with you. And it's easy to stay away from you because something about you gets on my nerves. But when I understand your trauma and your issues and your challenges, that's why when people come to church, you can't be so quick to kick them out and throw them away. Because if we throw away all the broken people, it won't be nobody in here. Because everybody in here is broken somewhere. The pretty people are broken. The not so pretty people are broken. The skinny people, the fat people, the wealthy people, the broke, the poor people. Everybody in there, educated and the illiterate, are broken somewhere. And you gotta have patience because everybody's broken somewhere. God put a light on it. Put a light on it. Let me see what I'm dealing with. Let me see who I'm dealing with. That's why I'm slow about putting people in position of power and influence. It's not that I don't like you. I just gotta see who you are. You be able to put somebody in there to tear up the whole thing because you don't take the time to ask no qualifying questions. 
What brought you here? What brought, what led you here? Where'd you, where'd you come from? <laughs> you just popped up. We go, no, we, where you come from? All of our ministers, we got 12 ministers, 10 ministers that are going up for licensing this year. Praise God for them. God sending me help. Yeah, 12 individuals that we've been, that we handpicked. Handpicked, Tony. When I say handpicked, I don't mean I picked them. I mean God picked them. I don't have enough sense to look all the way down into your childhood and figure out what happened to you when you was four years old. So God picked you to operate in that capacity. And then when God picked you, I said, give me a spiritual resume. Because <laughs> there's the thing. I know I'm limited in my sight. So I have to ask you for a spiritual resume so I can get a snapshot, a picture, a caricature of where you've been in your experiences. But even before I saw your resume, God already knew your resume. And God already knew the things that you went through and all the things. See, see, it's one thing for you to know what they went through, but it's another thing to discern how it affected them. I got to go. We ain't got time. We got Pentecost service. See, see, sometimes when you're dating people, they may reveal something really personal or tragic about them and say, oh, yeah, when I was five years old, this happened to me. But the deeper question is, how did it affect you? And how does what's happened to you at five affecting you now at 45? See, y'all ain't ready to ask those kind of questions. You, you, you think you're getting close to somebody because they're revealing secrets, but it ain't just the secrets. It's what happened to them as a result of that secret. I need light. Look at somebody say, I need light. So what light does is it affects everything. It affects your perspective. If you want to see real, lasting, radical change in your life, bring information. Bring light to it. Don't marry nobody till God put a light on them. Don't sign no contract till God put a light on it. Don't join no church till God put a light on it. Don't hire nobody till God put a light on them. As long as it's still a question mark and you don't know and I'm not sure, that means don't make a move. But the moment God gives you a light, it's like a green light at the traffic stop. Green means go. It gives you permission. It says you can go forward. You can go on. You can jump into it. Everybody that sends a green light over your life, give God a praise right here. For some of you, you've been wondering why God has put a pause on your life. And God has said, I put a pause on your life because there was something around the corner that you didn't know was coming. So I let the light be red. Don't be in such a hurry. Don't be in such a fret that you run through the red light. I stopped you here because there was a truck coming. I stopped you here because something was about to happen. I stopped you here because something was after you. But once I give you the green light, You thanking God for the times he said yes. I'm thanking my God for the times he said no. Y'all gonna make me preach up in here. For the times he said wait. For the times he said hold on. For the times he said don't sign it. I'm so glad that the God we serve will put a light. Slap somebody and say I made it because he put a light on it. I survived it because he put a light on it. I got up from it because he put a light on it. I didn't know who I was. Some of you, the real issue with you is that you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. The devil is attacking you on every hand. Slapping you up this side and that side of your face. Taking you through changes. And you're wondering, why me? Why I got to be the one to go through this? I'm the black sheep of my family. Everybody else is cool. But it's something about me that nobody seems to want to get with. And you're wondering why you're going through the things that you're going through. And here is the issue I have with you. You don't realize that you are the one. You don't realize that God has plans for you. You don't realize that God has anointed you from your mother's womb. You don't realize that the 
enemies on your track because he know greatness is about to come out of you. I need somebody that know you're great to give God a shot. They fight me because I'm great. They fight me because I'm a somebody. And sometimes you see something that I don't see. Some of y'all got people that don't like you and you don't even know why. It's because they see something on you that you don't even see. Touch your hands and say, God, put a light on it. Don't let me see everybody else and don't see myself. Some of y'all prophets get on my nerves because you see everybody else but yourself. The first thing God does is give you revelation about yourself. Don't tell me about Brother Paul. Don't tell me about Sister Angela. Don't tell me about nobody. God comes to tell you about you. Lift your hands right here and say, Lord, give me a revelation. Give me a revelation. The devil defeat you because you don't know who you are. You don't know that when you walk in here, the demons started trembling. You don't know when you walk in here that the devil started getting nervous. He's hoping that you came in ignorant and that you leave ignorant. But that devil is a liar. I just got a revelation of who I really am. If you just got a revelation of who you are, give God a shout right here. Let me close with this. When the children of Israel were walking through the wilderness, the Bible said they were led by a glory cloud called the Shekinah glory. An interesting thing about this cloud, it was a cloud by day, but at night it was a pillar of fire. It was light. And the light not only deterred snakes and adders and deterred enemies, the light made it possible for them to walk even in darkness. That the light allowed me to walk in dark places. That's why I get results where other people can't. Because I see what other people can't see. It's not that I'm so smart. It's that there's a glory cloud hanging over my life. If it were not for the light of God's glory, the light of the knowledge of God, I would not be able to see, to discern, to move, and to operate. But because there is light from the presence of God in my life, I'm able to make sound decisions, smart decisions. Somebody right now, God is trying to let you know that you're not going to be able to make this next move in your own wisdom. This is not about you. This is about me guiding you. Any man who lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally. If you ask me, I'll give it to you. It's your arrogance that's got you in trouble. It's your arrogance that got you fired. It's your arrogance that made you lose your marriage. It's your arrogance that makes people not want to give you opportunity because they know you don't know what you know. And when you talk, you reveal how much you don't know. Let people talk. When people talk, it reveals how much they don't know. <laughs> but God wants to give you light. If I had time, I would go back to the tabernacle and talk about how there were three kinds of light in the tabernacle. There was natural light, there was daylight, and then there was candlelight, where they worked under the light of candlelight. And then in the Holy of Holies, there was no candle, there was no daylight, there was just the glory of God who lit up the place. God is trying to tell some of you right now, I'm trying to get you past daylight, natural light, the light of education, the light of training, the light of your, your, your pride. I'm trying to get you past that. I'm trying to get you past the light of just service and working and moving. I'm trying to move into a place in my presence where there is no light but me. Oh, my God. That the ultimate goal is to get into the presence of God. We hire these musicians and we train these, these, these praise leaders because our ultimate goal is to get you into the presence of God. Once I get you in God's presence, God begins to download information. Lift your hands right here because God said I'm downloading some information to you right now. Oh my God, I'm downloading information to you right now. For somebody, I'm giving you wisdom about your kids. For somebody, I'm giving you wisdom about your marriage. For somebody, I'm giving you wisdom about how to handle that situation. For somebody, I'm telling you how to save some money. For somebody, you're going to know things the doctor didn't even know. You're going to walk into your doctor's office and tell them what it is. 
Even when they don't know, because I am downloading, Lord. You ain't downloading. Lift your hands and say, Lord, let's download it. Download. Give me information. Let me know. Don't let me be ignorant. Yeah. While you're in his presence, God is piercing your darkness. God is breaking through into your darkness. He's uncovering every area where you're being defeated. The only reason you're being defeated is because you don't have information. If you had information, you would do better. That's why you ain't got to get mad at people who are more successful. If I knew what they knew, I could do what they could. The only difference between me and somebody else is that I don't know what they know. But if you lift your hands here right now, God is saying, I'm going to download information to you. You may not have to go to Harvard. You may not have to go to Yale. I'm going to download some stuff to you that they can't teach you in a book. You're not going to talk to me. You're not going to talk to me. I'm going to download some stuff right now that you can't find on nobody's shelf. I say, lift your hands and say, Lord, I want it. Leaders are readers. Don't tell me you want to lead and you don't want to read. Don't tell me you want to lead people, but you don't want to go to school or be educated yourself. The fact that you don't want to learn everything is a sure qualifier that you are not qualified for leadership. Because the God we serve is guiding us with a glory cloud. With a glory cloud. Lift your hands right here. There's a glory hanging over this place right now. There's a glory hanging over this place right now. The things that God is doing in this church right now is because we're following a glory cloud. We used to sing a song way, way back that said, walk in the light. Beautiful light. Come where the dew just the glory shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. You want God to just shine during the day. But God said, I'm the God that will shine in the night. In your night season, I'll show up. When everything is dark and you can't figure out what to do, I'll show up. Lift your hands and say, give me lights. Give me lights. I lay down my position and I lay down my title and I lay down all the things that I'm proud of, Lord. And I say, give me lights. I pray like the book of Ephesians that God would enlighten you and give you more information that God would enlighten your spirit, that God would enlighten your mind. Lift your hands right here, God. I'm going to give you a strategy, God says. I'm giving you a plan. I'm giving you a plan of attack. What you want and what you need is right outside your door. I'm going to turn the light on so you can see what's in this room. The prophet told one man, there are more people with us than there are against us. The problem is you don't see it. Some of you are distracted with the things that are against you because you don't see the God that's for you. You're surrounded by angels. God, you think you're surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. They think they got me, Brother JP. But I'm surrounded by his glory. Anybody here surrounded by his glory? Lift your hands down on your feet. I'm surrounded by his glory. Lift your hands. Open your mouth right here. Begin to worship right here. Right here. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. For real. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I brought you as far as you could go. I brought you past the outer court of salvation. I, I brought you into the place of service where there's candle lights. You can work. Some people are stuck in the service, but don't go any further. They're stuck in the work. They're stuck in the work mode. They're stuck in, I'm the usher. I'm the greeter. I'm the, the praise leader, whatever I am. I'm stuck there. But God said, there's another level I'm trying to push you to. The next level I'm trying to push you to is into a glory that you've never seen before. If you open your mouth right here and lift your hands right here, I'm pushing you into another level of glory. There's something else beyond what you've experienced. Oh my God, I got to shut this down. There's something else beyond what you've experienced. There's something else beyond what you've seen. I has not seen no ear word. I, that's why you feel something tugging on you. You feel something pushing on you. You feel something kicking. Something in you say there must be something more. God said it's true. There's something more. Father, as we conclude this service, 
I'm praying that the words that we spoke will make somebody hunger for knowledge. Hunger for your presence. Hunger for your glory. We didn't come for entertainment, Lord. We came for enlightenment. I got a devil on my job I got to deal with. I got a devil in my house that I live with. I got a devil trying to attack my kids. And I'm wringing my hands because I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. And God says, if you bow in your spirit and let me show you, I'll give you great success. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I want great success. So I pray, Lord, for every person in the sound of my voice that the light comes on. That the light comes on. That you give them revelation out of your word. That you put them around people who can enlighten them, that can teach them, that can train them, that can show them a better way. I pray, God, you eliminate ignorant people. Get them out of my path. Get them out of my ear. Get them out of my way. Get them out of my phone. Get them off my Facebook. Get them out of my face and put around me some people who can teach me, who can train me, who can develop me, who can challenge me. We believe in you for it, God, in Jesus' name. Everybody believe that prayer. Give God praise right here, why don't you? If you're happy about what God's going to do in your life, give God praise, why don't you? If you know God's getting you ready to take you to something greater, give God a praise here, why don't you? If you sense in your spirit somewhere that God is taking you somewhere, give God a shout right here. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get out of here. Stand to your feet. We're dismissing. We're dismissing. If you're here this morning and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in the free pardon of your sins. You're walking in darkness. You're walking in darkness. You don't know what you're missing. You don't know what's available to you. Well, I've been around church.